All right, thank you so much again, um, everybody for coming today to Yulia Pinkusevich's um, art workshop. Uh, we're gonna be doing some automatic drawing today and it should be really fun. I love um, hosting these workshops and um, they're just such a great refreshing way to kind of spend an hour over lunch hour, um, especially on a Friday. Um, thank you all for coming, even though it's beautiful and sunny in Portland. Um, I'm assuming it's probably beautiful and sunny in Oakland too, Yulia, because um, it always is pretty much. Um, great. Well, if you don't know me, my name is Michelle Raymond and I'm the director of um, the Clark Art Talks and Archer Gallery uh, programming at Clark College in Vancouver, Washington. Um, and we have such great programming right now going on. Um, this is actually our last event of the winter term. Um, we have a quarter system at Clark. And um, so we're moving into spring break here um, in another week, which I'm sure the students that are on the call right now are real pumped about. Um, but then um, going into spring term, we have three more art talks um, coming up. Um, the next one we have is April 16th. And that is with Christina Victor, who is a fantastic uh, Cuban American artist. Uh, interdisciplinary work, um, does a bunch of sculpture, printmaking, um, graphic design, kind of the work. So I'm excited to host her next. Um, and then after that, we have Richard Tinkler coming in, who is a fantastic New York City painter. Um, I'm super pumped to host him. And then we also have um, Tamara Seal coming in in May, and she is a Southern California sculptor and installation artist. So that'll be great as well. Um, we do have everything kind of online at our um, virtual space right now, archergallery.space. Uh, and Yulia's show, uh, which is um, up through April 18th, I believe, um, Calm Under the Waves in the Blue of My Oblivion, is um, this beautiful experience, this journey, um, and slightly kind of personal narrative um, about her life and her lineage. And um, it's just a really stunning show. So please check that out if you haven't already. Um, it is entirely virtual. All of our programming this year is virtual. Um, so um, great opportunities to kind of check it out um, and check out all of these great talks and workshops virtually. So it's pretty cool. Um, and then, yeah, beyond that, I just want to say thanks to the arts department. Thank you to ASCC um, at Clark College for all of your support um, throughout this year. And um, obviously, it's been a challenge for everybody. Um, but um, I just appreciate everything that's um, been coming from you all as far as funding and uh, encouragement and support in all the ways. So thank you. Um, all right, so we're going to get into it. Um, I'm really excited to introduce Yulia, bring her in and um, have her work with us today. So um, um, if you feel comfortable, you know, asking questions auditorily as we go along, feel free. If you want to use the chat function, I'll make sure to kind of moderate that and mediate that. Um, but, um, but yeah, we're going to get started. Um, please make sure I put the um, materials in the chat that you're going to need today. Um, again, black ink or heavily brewed tea or coffee, uh, paper, drawing paper, uh, brushes, palette, charcoal, paper towel, and a cup of water. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks so much to Yulia for coming today. All right. I'm going to pin you. Thank you, you everyone. Um, so I kind of have the two screen thing going so you could see my tabletop and all my tools. And then I, I'm talking into my iPad, which then you can maybe see my face too. Um, hopefully it's working okay. If you don't have charcoal, that's totally fine. Um, I would say a pencil, like a number two pencil would be great if you have a crayon or something that has a little bit more of a different weight you can use, but I think just a basic pencil will do you just fine. Um, so today I, we're just gonna do a little bit of drawing and I think it's a good time, you know, it's been, a year since our lockdown started, I feel like, you know, hopefully <laughs> this, is, this is a new, new beginning as spring always is. And um, what better way to kind of tune back into the moment and um, get back into your body than drawing. I think drawing is a really accessible way to do that. And um, so, so I'll just kind of give you an overview of how we're gonna spend the day. Um, just make sure you have, you know, a stack of paper in front of you. You kind of want to have a few sheets and we're going to work through a number of warm up exercises first, just a quick way to kind of 
settle your mind, get into your body, align with your breath, kind of coordinate your hand eye situation. Um, and, uh, you know, and so the first thing I think is always just like, let's get present together, right? Like go ahead and take a couple of deep breaths and just like tune in, grab, you know, a pencil or a piece of charcoal or anything that could make a line. Okay, so the one thing I'd like to encourage you is to make sure that this, you know, automatic drawing, maybe I should back up a little bit, has, you know, a long history. And I think that, that um, in recent history, the surrealist used it a lot as a way to generate ideas. But I think it's got a much longer history. But it, even if, even thinking through this way of generating automatic ideas, there's something about trusting the body and the intelligence in the in the moment and in the intelligence of letting go. That is a really big asset, and this is what we're going to try to cultivate today. So, one thing I want to encourage you to do is allow your eyes to be an observer, not a guide, right? So you're kind of embodying this witness mind. And so your eyes are observing, they're not leading. And you're just allowing your hand to do whatever it's going to do. And it's not about the results. So oftentimes, I even encourage people to not look at the drawing at all, just like just feel it. And it's so much about embodying a feeling and trying to keep that feeling. So with those kind of things in mind, what we're going to do first is we're going to work on just drawing an uninterrupted line that is the length of your slow and deep exhale, right? So I'm just going to do this and, and talk through it and you can hopefully just follow along. So exhale fully. Deep inhale, and then just make a line as you exhale. And we're gonna repeat that four times. And just keep in mind, you know, consider slowness or fastness. Think about pressure. So that, I think that was five, one, two, three, four, maybe four. Make your final one interesting, see how it goes. Just let it, let it flow. Okay. So hopefully now you can kind of check in with yourself again and feel maybe a little bit more settled. You got a little bit more oxygen flowing through your blood. That's always a good thing, right? And so keeping that mindset, if you only have eight pieces of paper, I would say turn over your sheet, but if you have extra paper, you can just grab in the sheet. And so now we're gonna do something that, um, I'm gonna ask you to spontaneously place about nine dots on your page anywhere. Some could be close, some could be far, so go ahead and just do that. And so once you have your dots set, this is a way to trust that your hand knows where to go without your eye needing to guide it. So the, the rule is in this really basic exercise. This is a hand-eye coordination kind of resyncing. You're gonna 
you can start from one of the dots you picked and your eye now look at a different dot on your page, right? So I'm starting here and I'm gonna just look at this dot and don't remove your eye from the dot. Your eye's gonna wanna go to the hand, just try very hard to keep the eye on the dot. And again, take a deep breath and on the exhale, just draw a line, allowing your hand to naturally move towards that dot. I'm keeping my eye on the dot. And generally you hit it. You know, sometimes it meanders. And now go ahead and do this. Connect, you know, do this a number of times and see if in the process you could create three or so shapes, whatever that may mean, right? So you select which dots you go to. And you can kind of just move along as you move from one to the next. Again, important to keep your eye on the dot you're moving towards. And I think hopefully you'll be pleasantly surprised to see that your hand almost always ends up where your eye is looking. Which is kind of nice to know that your body knows where to go. You don't need to guide it. So hopefully by now you've generated a few shapes, you know, random shapes, kind of hard edge shapes. So we're gonna take, yeah, I did. <laughs> we're gonna take a minute now and you're gonna make a continuous line for a number of, you're gonna do one minute per form. And the idea is that you just stay either inside the shape or of course the negative space is also a shape, right? So don't feel confined, but you're gonna to try to do three different kinds of continuous line in the three different shapes in three minutes. And you know what, Michelle? I don't have a timer because all my devices are in use. You can totally so, keep track of time. That's would totally you mind fun. just yeah. keeping a one minute timer for each sure. of the following three exercises? I really appreciate it. Yeah, Julia, can you go over that exercise one more time? So yeah, I'm gonna talk time. you through it. Yeah, I, okay, I, awesome. I introduced you. Great. So when we start the timer, what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a line of any kind. It could be a really, nervous twisting line. It could be a very fluid slow line. It could be a combination of things. It could be a hard edge line. It could be a soft line. And you're gonna do that without raising your pen or pencil or charcoal off the page. So this is what we call a contour drawing. And so since I kind of messed, you know, messed around in this one already, I'm gonna just start on my second shape, but Everybody go ahead and just try to see what flows out of you. And you know, keep that idea in mind. Are you working with flat? What kind of rules are you setting for yourself? Can your lines cross with each other or do they never touch? Are they very big lines or do you make one big, one medium, one small? Just think of what kind of things naturally come up for you and pay attention to that. Okay, Michelle, whenever you're ready. All right, starting it now. One minute. Don't forget to breathe. I always forget to breathe when I'm drawing. Yeah, that, but you're thinking too hard when that I happens. Know.
sometimes a minute could feel very long. Right? <laughs> and sometimes it feels instant. All right, that's one minute. Oh, I was going pretty fast in that one. So I'm going to try to do something really different. I'm going to try to go super slow and like really force myself to go even slower than I naturally want to. I'm just trying different tools for fun. Okay, let's do our next minute. Okay. Ready? Same, same parameters for this one? Yeah. Awesome. Right. Same parameters, one continuous line. Um, consider defining a shape and consider one rule you set for yourself. Okay. Perfect. Go ahead. One minute starting now. All right, that's one minute. Okay. Doodles. And you know what? Like, my ego is like, oh, these look so bad. I'm so embarrassed that I have to show this on video. But ultimately, it's not about that, right? So just let that ego mind like flap around and just let it go. Cool. It's fun to nice. see other people's stuff. Nice, Jacob. Yeah. And so we're going to do this one more time. And this time I want you to pay attention to the pressure, right? How hard are you pressing down on something? And just as a demo, right? You can press really hard. You can press really light. And actually you can do both at the same time. You can, right? You can kind of oscillate the pressure without lifting your mark making tool and get a varied line weight. That's what we call this. So with that in mind, see if you can modulate the pressure, create a varied line weight in the next one minute exercise. Perfect. One minute starting clock now. I'm always so, so surprised about um, how loud drawing can be. Like this, can you hear my charcoal scratching? Well, yours and also mine. Um, and I actually, when I was in undergrad, I had professors that told me that you weren't doing it right unless you could hear the drawing happening. I really held I, on to that. It's such a big part of the feedback. That's why the online thing, you lose a little bit of that, that yeah. haptic feedback. Um, I think that's the one minute. That's one minute, yep. Okay, so, you know. Why not? But but you just you just found all kinds of tools for your vocabulary. You just developed a curvy line, maybe a straight line, a heavy line, a soft line, a line that goes between the two. Oh, fun, Joel. Cool. Cool. These are great. OK, so. OK, we're going to start our next exercise. Feel free to share with your screens if you want to, everyone. Yeah, and if you want to even like post a photo of your drawing in the chat if, or something, you know, whatever. Um, okay, 
So now we just kind of touched upon the idea of an expressive line, right? And now we're gonna do it with a little bit more intention. Meaning we're gonna try to actually embody a particular feeling and emotion and draw from that, which I think could be really cathartic if you're you know, going through some stuff, it's a good way, good place to put your anger. It's a good place to put your love. You know, there, there could be a lot of ways you approach a drawing. And when you bring all those things into a drawing, that's how you breathe life into it. That's how your work really kind of, people feel that. I really, really, truly believe in this idea of the proprioceptive um, painting or drawing where the energy that the artist puts into the work as they're making it really is like somehow embedded in there. That's why hundreds of years later, you can see a painting and still like <gasps> feel energized from it. And that to me is like the best magic of art. And, and I think like, you know, for me, that's the ultimate goal is to try to have your work really contain that kind of energy. And, you know, you're giving your life force to it and it, and it sustains. So that's kind of special. Okay, so, um, we're gonna do it again, three one minute drawings, really quick. And then we're gonna do one three minute at the end to kind of combine the things. So we were just thinking about different kinds of feelings. And so I'm gonna propose you think of the word lyrical. Lyrical, right? Now, what I want you to do is think about a lyrical line. What does that look like? How does it move across your page, right? That's all, that's all the prompt. So one minute to do that. If you have different tools, you could try changing tools. Otherwise, have fun, you know. What is a lyrical line? All right, I'm gonna start the timer right now. Oh, oh I forgot, wait a, minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, yes. wait a minute, wait a minute, before, before you start the timer. I forgot I had notes. I have notes to talk you guys through it. <laughs> Bear with me. Okay. Right, first, before we begin, because we didn't really embody it yet. Like I just said it and maybe you thought about it and you kind of imagined something in your mind, but walk, walk with me through this exercise. Um, first, really adopt the automatic drawing approach and put yourself in this receptive mind frame. Hopefully the exercise we just did kind of opened you up to that. Now, I really want you to think about how does lyrical feel in your body? What does it feel like, like really? You know, just take a moment, kind of close your eyes and try to feel it. Does it flow? How does it move? What kind of shapes, what kind of rhythm is created, right? What does it look like to you, right? When you close your eyes, what do you see? Now, draw lyrical without conscious control over the image. You're not trying to illustrate the feeling of lyrical. You're trying to embody it and allow that energy to flow through, okay? So with that in mind, again, the eye is a witness. It's not the commander, right? So let the eye just observe passively. If you're having a hard time letting go, just close your eyes. Just let your hand do the thing. Okay, one minute. One minute starting now. All right, that's one minute. Okay. Cool. cool. How'd it go? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. I was thinking about ballet dancers. Mm-hmm. Nice, Joel. Beautiful. 
Yeah. I was thinking of like ice skaters or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. We're not specifically, but something about that kind of movement, that curvature. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to flip the page or next page and we're going to do kind of the opposite. We're going to, we're going to try to do an expressive line that's agitated. Okay. So again, take a moment. How does agitated feel in your body? Like I even said that and my shoulders tensed up. I just like felt, you know, that's funny. But like, just, just observe. What do you do in your body when you feel agitated? What does it look like, right? And then again, without conscious control over the image, take a minute, show me an agitated line. All right. And it doesn't have to be continuous, I should say, right? And you can stop and start and just kind of feel. And if you feel like your mind's traveling, just pause and bring it back to where you are. Listen to the sound of the chart, the, your mark making tool. That's really a good way to stay present. All right. One minute starting now. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, that's one minute. How did I feel? Good. Get all that out. Yeah, cool, Joel. Yeah, cool, Michelle. Yeah. I broke I broke part of my charcoal. I, I guess I have a lot of agitation to deal with. <laughs> I thought you were doing it on purpose. I thought that was like this, like I was I had my yeah, eyes closed. There's something to it. I mean, yeah. it just happens, but you know, you just use it as a way to kind of Staccato, right? Like yeah. what's the rhythm that's happening? Okay, we're gonna do, let's do one more of this one, one more of these one minute. This time, think of the word slithering. Slithering. It's kind of got a physicality to it, right? Right, should I start the timer, Yulia? Um, yeah, okay. let's see. Again, right, how does it feel in your body? What does it look like? And again, without conscious control, draw the feeling of slithering. Go ahead. Starting. Don't forget to breathe. Mm -hmm. All right, that's one minute. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Well, some, something without feet yeah. <laughs> crawling around. Okay, and now you get three minutes to see if you could combine these different marks, right? So I have, and it doesn't have to be like an exactitude, but I have my lyrical piece 
really fluid, circular, kind of finer lines. You have my agitated lines. They're quite staccato, I would say. There's a kind of like rhythm and a drum beat to them. And then the slithering one, which is not quite the same as the lyrical, you know? And so in three minutes, see if there's a way you could just create a automatic gestural drawing, com you know, embodying either all three of these feelings or maybe one of them dominates or just sort of trying to use the visual language you just developed, right? Like I had no idea what was gonna happen and these things occurred. And now I'm gonna see if I could just continue to run with it and allow them to develop as they want to, right? Without me trying to control them and put it into some sort of category. So I'm gonna show three minutes. Three minutes, here we yeah. go. All right, starting now. And then the other thing that I would say is as you're doing this, think of a rhythm. Think of creating a rhythm to the drawing. It doesn't have to be a fast rhythm. It could be like the rhythm of, you know, the wind and the trees, or it could be like the rhythm of a cricket or the rhythm of a drum beat, right? So, and obviously your drawing could have multiple rhythms. So again, think about the three different rhythms you just explored in your last three and see how they combine. You've been working with one rhythm or one kind of pacing. Now would be a good time to try to embrace a really different pace or a different rhythm. Just switch it up. I need to bring it up or bring it down. There's something about the speed of the marks you make, right? Like having fast marks next to slow marks, it translates can feel the shift in speed in a drawing. Maybe it's intuitive, maybe you don't fully grasp it, but there's something there. Don't forget to vary your line weight. Press hard and then press light. That's all. And if you find yourself either getting attached or getting frustrated by the drawing, let it go. It's okay. Feel it and allow it to be and then let it go. But don't try to control it. I'm finding myself being like, oh, maybe I'm try to make it a little better or, you know, I'm fine. Oh, I'm getting attached to the drawing. It's not about that. It's about the process. It was fun to make. How was it for you? Any feedback? Yeah. Yeah. I really liked it. Um, it's so funny. Like when I, you know, teach drawing classes, uh, Jacob was in my drawing class, I think last term. Um, but I always just kind of feel like one minute is so long when you're in it and then you suddenly get to three minutes and you're like oh this is what i've been like craving i want this like longer period of time um so three minutes just feels so long once you've done one minute drawings <laughs> you're like, i get so much done uh yeah it's kind of fun um well we can do one more free form drawing or maybe we should move I feel like maybe now is a good time to, to move to our ink. We have about 20 minutes left, so that, that should give us enough time. So 
Okay, you got a few different kinds of dry media done. And so with ink, put away your charcoal or pencils. You're gonna need a cup of clean water. That's gonna be pretty important. Um, the paper towels just for, you know, clean up. If your hands are a little messy, it's okay, just wipe it. Um, so, first things first, right? Like dry media is one thing, but wet media is really different. And um, I'm sure most of you have worked with some sort of watercolor ink in the past, you know, kids love watercolor at least. And, but it's always a good idea to just get to know your medium first, right? So just like we did with our charcoal, um, go ahead and, you know, pick up a little bit of ink or you could drop it in your palette. It's probably the better version of what I just did. Yeah. And I just use these old little cups from stuff I buy for my pastels, but you can use anything. I often use paper plates. It's totally fine. Yeah. Michelle's got like the proper. Yeah, I have like a palette here with just like one of the ink wells has some ink in it. I just kind of used a dropper and then just plopped it into one of those wells. And so go ahead and load your brush with ink and you typically just want to dip the first, the like half of the brush into the ink and you see it's dripping off. So it's really saturated. So I'm just going to take a little bit off and then I'm going to use I'm gonna just make a line and see how long I could stretch it. How does this ink stretch? How does this paper work? Because different paper is different, different ink is different. You, you do the same, right? Just make a line, a long line. It could go slow. It could be a little curvy. You just make a line until your ink runs out because it's gonna go lighter, right? It's gonna start pretty dark. It's gonna go lighter and then it's gonna get dry. You're gonna get kind of a scratchy line and just keep, dragging it and see what you get. There's something really nice about that scratchy line. When it gets to a certain dry point, you can really control it. And I feel like it could look sort of like unfinished, but then when you really look at it on a drawing, it gives a lot of interest to the drawing from a distance, right? So I loaded the brush once and I'm still going. My line is really long. And I have a pretty big paper. I think this is like a 14 by 16 or something. No, not 14, it's like 12 by 16. I love ink so much. Every time <laughs> yeah, I play with it. Yeah, it's very right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I think I'm reaching the, I'm still, I still have some ink, right? I mean, you, you got a lot of, Hopefully there's a lot you can kind of get out of it and twist the brush in your hand to kind of vary the thickness of the line, right? And I'm using these bamboo, I'm using these kind of Chinese, Japanese bamboo brushes. Um, they're very soft, they're for water media. So they, they hold a lot of ink and I really love these. This is kind of my favorite brush. You could see how used up and worn it is. No label left, but um, I think it's, squirrel, <laughs> squirrel tail, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> or maybe it's synthetic, I don't know. Um, okay. Watercolor is fine too. Just then load it up really well on your brush. But yeah, especially it depends on the kind of, if you have a caked watercolor that's dry, you need to kind of wet it first. Otherwise, if you have a squeeze tube, you could just squeeze a little bit out in your palette, add a little water to the side and pick it up. So, I wanted to do a final, or I want to do a demo. The great magic of ink is wet on wet. And in order to do that, you first need to start with clean water. So I don't know if you have, now that we just sullied our water, I knew ahead of time and I forgot to say, but I prepared a second one. If you can just go grab another cup of clean water and make sure your brush is nice and clean. So you can rinse it and then just dab it on the paper towel and you could see if there's still pigment left. And it's okay if there's a little bit of pigment, it's not the end of the world. So I'll give everybody a minute to change water and then. 
going okay so far? Everybody all good? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, and you know, while everybody's getting water, I was just going to show you something else real quick. Um, I, I got two different brands of India ink. Let's see this one. So I have a Dollar Rani FW. These are acrylic based inks. And then I have this Dr. Martin's drawing ink. Please note, they're both indigo color. I'm just gonna show you how different the two indigos are. It's, it's so amazing that pigments come in so many ranges of colors. So we just use the, this is the acrylic ink. This is the FW ink. And this is the drawing ink. Same color name. Same color name. It's not even close to the same color. I mean, it's, they're both blue. Yes, but <laughs> I hope you could see how different it is. So I just thought that was kind of amazing because, and, and different paper takes differently to, to the inks. Pardon my reach. Yeah, I'm using this Bristol long. right now. You're using, yeah, I'm using kind of a uh, I don't even know. This is paper I bought for my child, but it's but it's it's acid free, you know, regular paper. It's got a little bit of a tooth and it's a little bit absorbent. This is a watercolor pad. It's a really small one, but I was just going to show you. It does really different things on different paper, and depending on the humidity in the house, or sorry, humidity or dryness and temperature, it dries like in a in a hot in the hot sun, watercolor will dry or ink will dry really fast. And you can kind of get it to remember all these little moves that you do with your brush. But it's actually not that warm today here. And so things are not drying as fast. And so they start to blend these little like um, discrete shapes. But yesterday when I did it, it was really evident. Anyway, okay, cool. hopefully by now, Everybody has their clean water. And so what you're gonna do is take your big brush, if you have a bigger one, and wet your page. Don't drench it, but just like you're painting it with water. Oh, what happened? Hang on. Oh, it probably timed out. It's my low battery. Oh. <laughs> I think we'll make it to the end, but <laughs> okay. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, right. So I'm just coating the paper with water and you could coat it, you know, you can do it consistently everywhere, or you can choose to leave a few spots dry. And I kind of lean to the side to see where it is. And the magic happens when you drop ink into a wet, onto a wet surface. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to kind of create a little bit of like a wave pattern by going through this and just making dots. And you could see how they spread and you could decide how much or how little pigment you wanna add and Again, kind of thinking about a little bit of that automatic drawing, you can just have a little fun with it. Mine's looking so cool. I love what on what. Yeah, it's very, it's really, you know, and here you really can't control it. You just don't know what's gonna happen. And so allow the process to teach you stuff. Okay, that's really part of the fun in art too. Hi, Ben. Thanks for coming. Ben teaches watercolor at Clark. Oh, hi. Well, I apologize. This is not very advanced, <laughs> but quick workshop just to have some fun. Right. I think what on what always just like intrigues me. Like every time I demo it in my classes, the students are just like, oh, and then I'm also finding myself being like, oh, oh, you know, so, so it is. Right, so now I'm getting, and it's so funny, this paper, 
this paper doesn't, it's very absorbent. It's almost like a tissue a little bit. So it doesn't want to spread. I'm going to do it one more time on a slightly different paper and see just for fun, see what happens. If you have uh, access to different kinds of paper, give it a try. It's, an, you know, it took me many, many years to kind of find the paper I like for the mediums that I prefer to work with. Because look at how much more it spreads on this paper, which is strange. And you don't have to do dots. You could do whatever you want. Right? I'm just showing you because eventually it all blends together and you get this kind of wave pattern. And what else is kind of cool with wet on wet is once you, your ink starts to dry, but it's not fully dry, you can come back and maybe drop darker dots on some spots to kind of re-emphasize certain areas. And now I'm noticing some parts are already dry and some parts are still wet, right? Like this one's not gonna wanna spread. And that's okay too. And so this technique can be applied. I'm just gonna demo a couple more things while, while you play. Um, obviously you can decide where you want things to spread and where you don't want things to spread, right? And so I'm gonna wet part of this paper and draw a couple of shapes on here with water. And then I'm gonna draw some lines with ink across the entire page, not just where it's wet, but also where it's dry. And you could see that in the wet parts, it wants to run, but in the dry parts, it stays pretty solid. And so you can be really specific. You can also pick up ink and just drop it into a wet edge. I love doing this. I feel like this gives you really great results. <laughs> and you just touch a wet edge and the ink will stay inside the wet parameter um, without. And so you could still maintain a hard edge and have a softness on the inside. I think that's kind of nice. It's a nice metaphor too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good point. Good point. <laughs> May we all strive for that. Yeah. So. And, you know, I only picked one color, but you can, of course, do multiple colors. I have this fluorescent orange here, too, for some reason. It almost looks like film sometimes, you know, like mm -hmm. developing photography. Oh, yeah. I, I haven't done a lot of dark room work, so it's not something I'm super familiar with. But I love it. It's lots of fun. Anyway, and I, I can't think of a better way to get out of your head than just to watch ink dry. Like this is so <laughs> for me, this is yeah, really fun. So much better than <laughs> scrolling through Instagram or something, right? Right, and then feeling bad about yourself. Exactly. You yeah. know, just, just be in the moment and really just like enjoy the phenomenon of the present. Yeah. Is. And so Ink will usually get a little lighter as it dries. Dep Again, it, it just depends on your paper, depends on your ink, what kind of ink you're using, et cetera. Um, but, you know, the other nice thing about working wet on wet is, you know, I think with wet mediums, it's really important to work fast and in layers. So at least that's the way I work. I don't do very, I mean, I don't often do very tedious water-based medium things. I usually work more with pastels or charcoal, but um, you know, once your work is dry, this one is pretty much dry. You can come back and, you know, add things right on top of it. And it's kind of cool because what's different about 
watercolor ink versus acrylic or oil is that it's inherently a transparent medium. And so you see when I put the orange on the white, it looks orange, but when I put it over the blue, it shifts to a much more greener tone. And so you can layer the colors. If I layer red on here, you'd get a purple hue, et cetera. Sorry, I didn't prepare too many colors. We're not gonna deal with color, it's too much, <laughs> too much all, all at once. Okay, oh my God, we're almost out of time. Last exercise, sorry, I got into all the wet on wet. <laughs> okay, last exercise, the really easy, really fun Rorschach test, right? This is kind of the finale, always gets good results, <laughs> super fun. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna allow the process to make uh, composition for us and you're only gonna you know place a couple of marks and allow the process to do your thing what I would encourage you to do is try to contain most of your marks on one half of the paper try it this way first and then if, if it feels limited you can add more this way when you fold your paper all your ink doesn't run it kind of stays where you put it and you're just printing it onto the other one so what you're going to do is just you know the surrealist would say spill some ink on it <laughs> like just spill some ink on it and i'm going to maybe start with a couple of wet areas and then i'm going to you know maybe add drop in a darker part there and then just do some random shapes and I'm not thinking too hard about it and honestly whatever this looks like it won't look like this when you're done and I would just say go you don't want to go too heavy with the pigment but you don't want to be dry either you kind of want little puddles so you're looking for little puddles of ink little ones very thin puddles right so if it's if it's like pouring off your page that might happen too hopefully you don't have um, anything too precious around you when you squeeze it sometimes things get in the way and we're going to do it i'm going to do a two-part two-color rorschach so i placed my little ink blots down doesn't look like much and now i'm going to go ahead and just fold it in half carefully and squeeze it down or I shouldn't I shouldn't say squeeze it but just kind of press it down to make sure that the ink transfers onto the other page and depending on where your little puddles were and how you squeeze it things will occur right so now the moment of reveal ta-da kind of cool starting to look a little you know I let a lot of the small marks stayed small which is kind of exciting so I'm going to add an orange in here but you can open it up and you could do another one or you can oops see now i'm just adding things symmetrically because i want to but really i'm supposed to stick to this one side um and see what happens okay it looks like a portrait it's kind of like oh, two cool. eyes look at that yeah okay oh and now we're running out of time for real Let's see what happens whoa Kind of cool it's almost like a brain scan or something yeah it's like a pelvis or like the inner skull of a deer i don't know so anyway this is kind of fun and this is a really like a easy way to get some interesting symmetrical images and you can do this with all kinds of paint house paint fabric paint tempera paint ink watercolor you know wash mud. my student my students <laughs> have <cranberry> juice. <laughs> My students have gouache uh, projects due on Tuesday. So gouache can do this as well. Okay, any questions? I think that's all I had planned for today. I, any feedback? What was fun for you? Anybody wanna turn on their mic and just talk, talk and give me like a one minute debrief? I'm curious what, hey Jacob. Uh Hi, uh, what I found most fun was the water on water part. And when you, like like you showed earlier, when you dripped it um, with your, obviously your brush and you just watched it spread, you know, it's like, it's like almost as if it was like alive and had a, a mind of its own. It's like you dipped in and just went away. Um, so I thought that was super cool. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thanks for that feedback. 
Anybody else want to share? Thanks for coming, Janine. Thank you, everybody. If you have to, I know there's like two minutes left till one o'clock, right? My clock says 12.58. So. Yeah. Well, we can stay a couple more minutes. Um, anybody who's able to, if you want to stay and ask any questions, uh, you're welcome to. I'm going to stick around. Maybe Yulia will too. I just like the fact that building a toolkit, which I think a lot of this is, is kind of half the fun in itself. You know, yeah. there's an art in like setting up all your brushes and, and finding out the tools. And it's, you said this a lot, it's about the journey, right? So I think that journey that kind of gets you there and documenting it with all the little, um, with all the, the test drawings is an art in itself, you know, and I wish I could see more of that from different artists as they work. I'd like to see their drafts and I'd like to see how they got there, you know? Thanks, Joel, for that feedback. Yeah, that, that's a great point. And I think, um, so, you know, starting a big project can be really daunting. And I often will just sit down and like, I call this doodling or, you know, do warm ups for an hour or less or more, depends what I need. Sometimes I'm just not in the headspace, you know, and it takes me a while to get there. Other times it just flows. And, and oftentimes I find that many artists have a kind of automatic drawing practice. And William Kentridge, who I really admire, um, recently gave a lecture at UC Berkeley, which I think is online now. And if you haven't seen it, and if you're into drawing, I would revisit it because he really talks about allowing stupidity to like prevail in the studio. And I feel like there's something sort of like anti-intellectual in this process, but I think that there is an intelligence to it nonetheless, right? Like it's not the same kind of intelligence, but there's an intuitive intelligence. And I think if you trust it, you can get somewhere really good. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like speaking, right? I mean, we're talking about a language and building a language and drawing and painting and making art. And so, you know, I think kind of thinking about the vocabulary, like you said earlier, you know, building that vocabulary and drawing. And then at some point it starts to really become this thing where, you know, the, the intuition leads you and you get to rely kind of on on that knowledge that you've built, just like you do with language. Like, I don't think about every single word that I'm saying right now, you know, it's just a thought and then the words kind of string together. So I think that can happen too um, with enough practice and kind of learning as you go with, with art making. So yeah. that's my cat up there. That's so cute, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and there's, you know, the, the, the thing that I wanted to mention is that, you know, when you do this often enough, you notice that you repeat yourself. There's certain marks that you tend to make. You're more, you know, some people do things like this. Some people do things like this. And noticing those idiosyncrasies and noticing what kind of things you tend to, you know, be drawn to, that's your mark making. That's your voice in there. And so, you know, pay attention to that. And if you tend to do it like this, that means own it and kind of use it. That's your thing. Yeah, I love it. I love that. Yeah, sentiment is amazing. Um, I think my favorite part was like the, whoa, um, I'm fading into your, your drawing behind me. Um, but I love this kind of like continuation of the line and just watching like, you know, the value shift as you go and just kind of the draining out. Like that was a super therapeutic moment for me because I don't often allow myself that, that you know, I, I'm always kind of dipping back in to control how much you know, the ratio is there between the, the pigment and the water. And in this case, I felt like, oh, I'm supposed to just let it run out, you know? And, you know, you can think about that in terms of time, like the ephemerality of, you know, kind of an urgency of, of mark making. Um, and it's such a great metaphor. It's like, I, I often don't allow myself the freedom to just run out, you know? That's, that's nice. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it, it gives you an idea, like, right, then you know how long of a line you could make without having to double dip. You also know, um, yeah, I mean, it, you know what the pigment looks like as it dries, you know what you, the dry brush version of this mark will be, you know, it's just the, again, it's just the way to like, what is this vocabulary? So cool, Michelle, because it's not a very beautiful thing to look at, but I'm glad that the process was. No, I love it. It's actually, I'm looking at mine and it is really beautiful. Yours is- The yours texture is, is really nice. How it becomes more transparent as you go. It's really nice. Um, yeah, any other final notes or thoughts or questions for Yulia? No? 
All right. Well, thank you all so much for coming. Um, this will be recorded or it is recorded. So um, it will be posted to the archergallery.space website and you're welcome to revisit, share it, et cetera. It'll be there um, this afternoon. Um, share it with your students if you're a professor. Um, and um, yeah, just make sure to check back to that same website for Yulia's show, which is up now, like I said earlier, uh, through April 18th, Calm Under the Waves in the Blue of My Oblivion. It has a lot of beautiful drawings. Um, a cropped portion of one is behind me right now. They're just stunning. Um, you get to sit and kind of explore each one and, and kind of zoom in and just really pay attention to um, a lot of those techniques that she went over today. Oh, that's beautiful. Gorgeous drawing. Lovely. Ooh. It looks like it's under Erica's oh, name, but I think, cool. yeah, lovely. Like a, hi, hi, that's beautiful. Gorgeous. I love the colors. Amazing. Thanks for joining us. I know, beautiful color choices. Cool. So, um, but yeah, um, come back, um, check us out, see all of the past uh, Clark Art Talks that are also recorded and on our website. And um, yeah, we will see you next time, hopefully for our next Art Talk or Workshop in April. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so everyone. much, Julia. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming. See you next time. Bye.